Z-Image generated all of these on my machine with one model. This photorealistic off-road shot, this anime rooftop scene, this cyberpunk poster, this creepy demon sketch in an old journal, this pixel art of Jinx, and this Pixar-style princess in the woods. In this video, I'm going to take you from zero to fully installed to advanced workflows on both your local PC and RunPod in the cloud. So if you've been looking for a single model that can do realism, anime, stylized art, and more, stick around. You'll need three things for the basic setup. The Turbo Checkpoint. Mine is named Z underscore image underscore turbo underscore BF16 dot safety tensors, and it goes in your comfy UI slash models slash checkpoints folder. The Z image VAE, usually called AE dot safe tensors, which goes in comfy UI slash models slash VAE. And for the low VRAM version, one of the GGUF UNET files, for example, Z underscore image underscore turbo dash Q5 underscore K underscore S dot GGUF, which lives in comfy UI slash models slash UNET. Let's go through this graph node by node. I've already wired everything together. The reason this section looks like this is just so you can see every connection clearly and rebuild it yourself if you want to. Up here in the interchangeable group, we have two model loaders, load diffusion model for the full Z image turbo checkpoint and UNET loader GGUF for the quantized UNET version. You only need one of these active at a time, depending on your VRAM. Use the full diffusion model if you've got plenty of VRAM, or switch to one of the GGUF UNETs if you're on a smaller card. Whichever one you choose, its output plugs straight into the K sampler. Next, same idea for clip. In this interchangeable clip block, we have a normal load clip node and a clip loader GGUF node. Again, you only use one of these. The clip output goes into our two clip text encode nodes. That's the positive and negative prompts. Down here, we've got the load VAE node. This should be pointing at the AE.safe tensors file we downloaded earlier. That VAE output will later feed into the VAE decode node to turn latents back into an actual image. These two nodes are both clip text encode prompt. I've set the positive prompt node to green so it's easy to recognize. This is where you type what you do want. The negative prompt node is a different color, and that's where you'd normally put what you don't want. For Z image turbo, negatives are optional and in a lot of cases not even necessary. Comfy UI still expects this node to exist in the graph, but you can just leave the text box empty. I usually minimize the negative prompt node by clicking the little dot on the left of the title, so it's out of the way but still connected. Both of these text encoders feed into the K sampler as positive and negative conditioning. This node here is empty SD3 latent image. This is what actually defines the canvas we generate into. Width and height control the image size. Batch size is how many images you generate per run. Z image turbo is trained at 1024 by 1024, so I recommend starting there for best results then scaling up or down once you know your VRAM limits. The latent output goes straight into the K sampler. The heart of the graph is the K sampler. This node takes in the model from our loader, the positive and optional negative conditioning, and the empty latent image, and it actually runs the diffusion process. A few important settings here. Seed. This is basically the ID of your image. If you keep the same seed and same settings, you'll get the same composition again. Control after generate decides whether the seed changes automatically each time. I keep this on randomized so every run is fresh unless I lock a seed on purpose. Steps. Z image turbo is trained around eight steps. You can experiment in the six to 12 range, but going way above that usually just wastes time and can even make results worse. CFG. Because of how Z image turbo was trained, a CFG of 1.0 works best as a neutral setting. Setting it to zero tends to break things, so I recommend leaving it at 1.0 and only nudging it for experiments. Sampler name. I'm using Euler here, it's stable and predictable. Feel free to test others if you want different flavor. Scheduler. I'm on simple. Again, it just works. You can play with the others later. Denoise. Leave this at 1.0 for a full strength generation. The output of the K sampler is a finished latent that we can decode. Finally, the K sampler connects to VAE decode, which uses the VAE we loaded earlier to convert that latent into a real image. From there, the decoded image plugs into the save image node which writes your result into the comfy UI output folder with whatever file name prefix you set. And that's the entire base workflow you need to start generating with Z Image Turbo. Now that this is working, we can move on to the advanced image workflows. LoRa's, in-painting, image-to-image, upscaling, and sharpening. You'll also see this RG3 bypass node in my graph. This is basically a safety switch that lets me turn on and off different groups without breaking everything when I disable nodes. 
You don't have to use it, but it keeps big workflows from running all at the same time. Now let's plug LoRa's into this basic Z-Image Turbo setup. You will need to add any load LoRa node. I use and prefer the Power LoRa loader from RG3, but any will work. You put the node between the load models and the text prompts. You've got two options. Download LoRa's manually and place them in the correct folders, or use the Civic Comfy panel inside Comfy UI to do it automatically. First option. You can always download any LoRa directly from CivitAI.com, then drag it from your downloads folder into Comfy UI slash models slash LoRa's. That works, but it's slower. The easier way is to use the Civic Comfy app in Comfy UI, which can download models straight into the right folders. For that, we need a Civit AI API key. Go to CivitAI.com and make sure you're logged in. Click your profile icon in the top right of the site, then at the very bottom of the menu, click the cog icon, Settings. Scroll all the way down to the API Keys section. Click the blue Add API Key button. Give your key a name like ComfyUI underscore key, anything that reminds you what it's for, and click Save. Civit AI now shows you your API key once. Important, copy this key and store it somewhere safe because you won't be able to see it again. If you lose it, you'll have to create a new key. Back in Comfy UI, click the Civic Comfy button at the top. Go to the Settings tab. In the Civit AI API key optional field, paste your API key and click Save Settings. Now you can download models directly in Comfy UI. Open the Search tab in Civic Comfy and type Pixel Art Style LoRa. Look for the Z Image Turbo version of that LoRa and click the blue Download button. When you click Download, Civic Comfy jumps to the Download tab. Before you start, check the default model type for saving. If you're downloading a LoRa, set this to LoRa's. If it's a checkpoint, set it to checkpoints, and so on. This makes sure files land in the correct models slash LoRa's or models slash checkpoints folder automatically. Once it's set correctly, scroll down and click Download. When it finishes, refresh Comfy UI or reload the page, and the LoRa will appear in your LoRa node dropdowns. Let's do a quick test so you can see it working. In my basic Z Image Turbo plus LoRa workflow, I'll select the Jinx Z Image LoRa and the Pixel Art Style LoRa. Set a simple prompt like Pixel Art City Street at Night, Neon Lights, Jinx Style Character Walking, and hit Run. A few seconds later, we get a clean Z Image Turbo render with the Pixel Art LoRa baked in. No manual file moving, everything handled by Civic Comfy. And that's how you set up Basic plus LoRa support with Z Image Turbo. Next up, we'll move into the Z Image Turbo inpainting workflow, where we can add or remove objects from an existing image. Now let's look at Z Image Turbo inpainting. This lets you change just part of an image instead of regenerating the whole thing. I'm going to use this Pixar style princess image, and I want to add a magical treasure trinket in her open hand. First, load your image into the inpainting workflow so it shows up in the preview. Then right click on the image preview and choose Open in Mask Editor, Image Canvas. That opens a separate window where we paint the area Z image is allowed to change. In the Mask Editor, use the brush to paint over her open hand, only the area you want to replace or modify. The painted area is what Z image will try to redraw. Everything outside the mask stays untouched. When you're done, click Save in the top right to send the mask back into the workflow. Back in Comfy UI, go to your positive prompt and describe what you want inside that masked area. I'll change mine to something like Magical treasure trinket sitting in her open palm, same Pixar style, same lighting and colors. Then in the K sampler, set denoise somewhere between 0.7 and 1.0. Lower values keep more of the original image. Higher values give the model more freedom to redraw. I usually start around 0.8 to 0.9 for inpainting with Z Image Turbo. Once that's set, click Run and Z Image will regenerate only the masked area, now with the magical treasure trinket in her hand. At the end of the workflow, I've added an Image Compare node. This gives you a slider you can drag left and right to see before versus after, perfect for checking edges, artifacts, etc. That's the basic inpainting flow. Mask, Prompt, Denoise, Compare. Before we finish, let me show you the last three workflows that come with this Z Image Turbo Pack. First is Image to Image. This one is super simple. Upload any image you want to restyle. Pick your Z Image Turbo Model or GGUF from the dropdown. Add a prompt that describes the new look you want, while still keeping the core of the original image. Hit Run. Z Image will use your original as a guide, but push it toward whatever style you describe in the prompt. Next is the Upscale Image Workflow. Here you just drop in your finished image. Choose your upscale size and upscale model. Click Run and let it output a cleaner, higher resolution version that's ready for thumbnails, prints, or client work. And finally, the sharpening workflow. Same thing, load your image, Pick the Sharpen preset or strength, 
press run. It's perfect for fixing slightly soft faces, armor details, or small text before you upload or send to a client. If you're using my workflow JSON, here's how the whole thing is laid out on your canvas. On the left side, you've got the full workflows, text to image, LoRa, in-painting, image to image. On the right side are the low VRAM versions for smaller GPUs. And at the bottom, you'll see the two utility workflows, upscale and sharpen, ready to plug into anything. If your local GPU is struggling, you can also run all of this in the cloud. Check the link in the description to launch my RunPod template. It spins up comfy UI, gives you access to more VRAM, and there's a chance at five to $500 in bonus credit when you sign up through that link. If you've never used RunPod before, watch my dedicated RunPod setup video and follow along step by step. And that's it. That's Z Image Turbo inside Comfy UI. Install, models, GGUF, LoRa's, in painting, image to image, upscaling, and sharpening, all in one workflow pack. If this helped you, hit the like button, subscribe so you don't miss any videos, and drop a comment with what you want me to cover next. If you want all of these workflows plus future updates and my other advanced templates, check out the Patreon link in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.